Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Today with Matt and Dave. I'm Matt Ricker, broadcasting from the basement of Lapenta. This is WICR, I own college radio. And I'm Dave Horvath, also broadcasting from the basement of Lapenta. I uh, hope uh, you're doing well, Dave, on this um, warm, uh, well, not so warm, Thursday afternoon. Uh, you know, it's something a little chilly, but we are in fall, member. People got to realize weather can't stay beautiful forever. Yeah, I, uh, you know, it, I'm kind of enjoying this fall weather. It's not too hot, not too cold. No, I will, no what, was it yesterday or two days ago? The weather was, like, perfect. It was, like, mm-hmm. you know, upper 60s. It was just little breeze. It felt like fall. It smelled like fall, felt like fall. It just felt fantastic outside. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we have we have a lot to get to. I, I can't believe, you know, that uh, seven. this is Already. our seventh show. I know. You know, every week we just, <laughs> it's amazing how far we've already gotten through the semester. And we're already talking about, hey, we talked about before, classes. And we're already starting to look at classes for next semester. Yeah, I, I just, I can't believe it, you know, how fast it's going. Um, but uh, anyway, we have a lot of news to get to and a lot to talk about today. So oh, it's an important day. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to start with uh, some national news to talk about. And our top story this afternoon is President Obama's reversal on the war in the Middle East. He announced this morning that U.S. forces will remain in Afghanistan at the current levels throughout much of 2016, according to CNN. This is yet another delay in their scheduled withdrawal and acknowledgement that America's longest war won't be concluded while President Obama is still in office. Back when Obama was campaigning, the president said that he would end the wars in the Middle East. This p- potentially jeopardizes a cornerstone of his legacy. Hey, uh, something else didn't he say? I remember correctly, was it when he was running the second time? He's like, I ended the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. I ended it all. Did you? Because last I checked, we still have soldiers over there. I have a friend who's o- over there. Actually, I've got a couple friends who are over there right oh, now. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So, oh. for him to say he ended the war, no, you didn't. Yeah. The war's still going on. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a hard um thing. I mean, you know, President Bush was the one who, you know, sent troops over there after... 9/11. First, it was Iraq. I mean, we're not officially st- we're not officially still in Iraq, but we, we are still. We have we have military advisors there and and uh, other soldiers there, just <clears throat> trying to straighten that country up, uh, straighten that country out. You know, because back in December of 2011, I believe it was, we withdrew from Iraq, but then mm-hmm. they ended up having to send some more troops over there because of uh, up uh, because of uprisings and other terrorist it's just activity. a mess it's one of those things it's <coughs> it's never going to get better if we just stay there but when we leave it still doesn't get better i i agree i mean you know no one's found a solution there's just not i don't i don't know if there's a solution right now because it's, they're not strong enough to survive on their own mm-hmm. but every day we stay in there we lose more men and women of our armed forces mm-hmm. and we spend and we're spending how much money trying to help these other countries Mm-hmm. I get it. We're a superpower. We're supposed to do that. But it's... I've, I've said this before. It's almost a lost cause. I know. And it's not changing anything. No. Like, uh, honestly, it's not. It's And it's never going to change anything. I mean, it's unfortunate that ISIS and ISIL is, ha- are, you know, on the rise now. Oh, Taliban. You know, there's people uh, that talk about, oh, ISIS just got big all of a sudden. ISIS has been around for a long time. We just didn't know about it didn't know about it the government knew they just yeah. they, w- they didn't look at it as a threat but people got to realize the taliban's not gone they had the taliban maybe have shrunk tremendously I'm not saying it hasn't yeah but it's still pr- also prevalent in these countries it's just i don't know yeah i i agree i mean um you know it's it's just a, a tough situation and we've lost so many lives uh, so many good men and women that shouldn't have lost their lives i know and pe- people that uh, basically wrote a blank check to the United States government and gave their lives um, fighting terrorism and fighting for our freedom. Um, so um, our thoughts and prayers are with the, all those who are lost. All those have been lost over the years, and let's hope we can get to a point when we don't have to hear any more names be read <coughs> of those who died. And uh, b- But uh, this new plan um, that President Obama I- and the Defense Department is... Uh, imposing is uh, they'll keep about 
9,800 United States troops in Afghanistan before an anticipated drawdown to about 5,500 by the time he leaves office in early 2017. I mean, hey, listen, I, I like that they're taking people out, but that's still 5,500 people. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of people still. Think yeah. about this college campus has what? About thirty nine, uh, not thirty nine thousand, three thousand nine hundred students. Yeah, so we we can even round up four hundred, four four hundred, four thousand <laughs> total. Mm-hmm. That's imagine all of us. Yeah, and that's not even it's still another fifteen hundred more. Yeah, I know. Um, But President Obama has made it clear that the United States has some gains in Afghanistan and noted that the Afghan government and its security forces are now, quote, fully responsible for securing their country, end quote. This plan is now to maintain the 5,500 United States military personnel in Afghanistan after a drawdown set to take place in late 2016 or early 2017. Um, while this new plan avoids a disaster, it is certainly not a plan for success, end quote. U- you know, uh, U.S. Armed Forces Services Committee Chairman Mac Thornberry said in a statement. He also said, quote, given the troubling conditions on the ground in Afghanistan and the other security problems in the region, keeping 9,800 troops there through at least 2016 is necessary to our security interests. Now, I mean, in my family, I've had um, I had a grandfather who served in uh, Korea and uh, World War II um, in the Navy. Um, I also had a uh, uncle that served in the Marines um, for a short period of time, and I also uh, my my other grandfather served in uh, the National Guard. Uh, so I mean, I, I have some military. Um, uh, you know, experience in my family, so you know I understand like where they're coming from with, uh, uh, with you know these troops, and it's it's so hard like for these families. I mean, I wasn't born like when all that was happening, but but you know it's it's just so it's got to be so hard for you it's know people stress. to see their loved ones to to go off into war and not know because you don't know you don't know nobody knows the outcome. The mm. only person that knows the outcome is the Lord Almighty up there. Only one. You don't know. Yeah. And I just, you know, this is a little side note, but I just don't think we treat our, we don't treat our soldiers when they come back. They get, they uh, get forgotten about. I, I agree. You know, um, actually, that's been an issue in the 2016 debate, which we'll get to a little later in the show. But, um, you know, th- there's a debate on, like, what to do with all those veterans that come back. Obviously, some you know have PTSD. They have other. They some that are just disabled because of uh, yeah. injury. And but something has to be done. Like a f- um, I know that a few companies specifically are going out of their way to hire um, uh, veterans that come back from war. I mean, and that's a great thing. And we have you know. Uh, we still have a lot of unemployment in this country, oh yeah, well so which is a major problem. But that's you know a whole another debate. That's a whole that's a whole week's worth of debates. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, but I I, I believe it, you know we need to make like programs. The next president needs to make programs for veterans to so that they can adjust back to civilian life and to get more I, comfortable again. Even with that, Matt, off, off what you're saying, yeah. if you're a veteran. And you apply for a job, like you should be getting your job. Mm-hmm. No veteran should be homeless or jobless. You know, they, they give their life, their blood, their sweat, their tears. Yeah. They saw horrific things happen. And you're going to tell me that they're not qualified enough or, or they don't get a job? That's yeah. not fair. I know. After everything they've been through, they deserve to get the job. And I could say one thing is, I know as a college kid, that at our age now, Matt, we start to look at, oh, in a couple of years, I'm going to be, in a short while, I'll be looking for a job. But I could say uh-huh. right now, like, if it was between me and a veteran, I, I, the veteran des- deserves it. Because there's nothing I've done that the veteran hasn't done. And mm-hmm. the veteran's done more than I have. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's just, it's so sad. And uh, also, with the veterans' health care, like, back last year when... All those scandals were coming out with uh, they had so many veter- injured 
veterans that were trying to be seen in the hospitals and it, the whole system was was just um staged and it, that's i mean that's a whole nother issue but the veterans need better treatment i think that's the main overall yes yeah. i agree 100 percent uh, moving on to our next headline uh, that we have, uh, the FBI, the Justice Department, and the Justice Department are investigating daily fantasy sports websites, <laughs> according to Fox News. Uh, it's a funny story. Uh, the United States Justice Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation are probing whether the business model of daily fantasy sports opera operators violates federal law, according to people familiar with the matter. The Justice Department is trying to determine whether daily fantasy f games are a form of gambling that falls outside the peer view of the exemption. No decision has on the matter has been reached, uh, these people said. Uh, it could be. I yeah, I mean, I, to tell you the truth, I, can you tell, talk to me a little bit about what that is? I well, mean, I know, s you know, someone's actually just explaining this to me, but the idea is, because I didn't understand at one point, they were, I was looking at these values of players because they get it's like a value system. So you give up how much money you want. But like I was looking at the value and it said like eleven thousand dollars, and I said, "There's no way that's real money. No way someone's gonna put eleven thousand dollars in someone else when you gotta build a team." But the way it is is a lot of these. There's a lot of them are one day. You'll you can be like I've heard you can play in like a twenty five cent league. So you could you'll throw twenty five cents with everyone else, and you pick your team. So with twenty five cents. You're given however much uh, wiggle room or fake money, we'll say pretend money, to use. So say you get 50000 pretend dollars, you get to split that among different players and athletes. And the whole idea is if you win, it, you don't win $0.25, cents, you can win like 200 bucks. Oh. So I know I know if I get some, someone I was talking to, they won like $200 in a $0.25 cent league. And there, but there was a whole scandal actually about that. They talked about they banning people that are work with FanDuel and stuff like that. Because I think it was someone from, like, the Daily Draft one got information and then applied in FanDuel and won, like, $360,000, like, one, on a weekend and like, in one of these leagues. And they said, like, you know, that's not fair because he had had inside information because he worked for the, one of the other, these other companies. So he, what he did is instead of going to his own company, he went to another one and he won a boatload of money. You know, it's it's almost like the online gambling in a way. Would you say? Yeah, it is like it is like an online gambling. You think about yeah. it, it's people may not consider it's like oh, it's one day. I'm only doing this much money, but no, people. It's just like any other gambling. Over time, you get addicted and you just keep putting money into it. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I still think it's funny the government's getting involved. <laughs> Why aren't they getting involved in this? Yeah, I mean, um, we. Uh, what was I going to say? Um. Yes, I, I've heard this something about this on 60 Minutes, I think they were talking about. Um, I'm not sure when. I, I think it was maybe a few months ago. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's just inf uh, interesting um, to how see the it. government is getting involved. And, yeah. I think they have other topics. I think they have other topics they should uh, worry about mm -hmm. instead of FanDuel. Uh, moving on now, uh, our next headline is Nine Homes Destroyed, No Injuries in Central Texas as a Wildfire um, occurred according to Fox News. The number of homes could grow in that burn, uh, according to Fox News. The San Antonio Express reports that the blaze prompted the evacuations of nearly 200 homes and burned more than 3,500 acres uh, since it ignited on Tuesday. Um, the county miles the county 30 miles east of Austin has had low humidity and sparse rainfall. Uh, forecasters predict the highs in the 90s with gusts of up to 10 miles an hour through Friday. Let's hope that doesn't spread. I mean, it's it's crazy. These wildfires, they've been going on for a wow. few months now. and uh, Well, more than a few months for over a year, I'd say. And it's just... Because some parts of the country just aren't getting the water. Uh, some places, like, look at... South, to go back... Was it last week or two weeks? Last week with South Carolina and the flooding and how they're, they're getting so much, and then you go to other parts of the country and they got nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just so devastating. And then uh, also in that county, um, it's called uh, Bastrop County. It was the worst uh, scene. I'm sorry, the scene of the worst wildfire recording recorded in state history in 2011. More than 30,000. I'm sorry, 30,000 
acres burned, and more than uh, 1,200 homes were lost, according to that newspaper. Now to 2016. On Tuesday, the first ever 2016 Democratic debate was held in Las Vegas, hosted by CNN's Anderson Cooper um, on Tuesday. It was, uh, it was a long debate. It was from, I think, 9 to 11, t so two hours. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing just because I, I, I just couldn't. I, I didn't have the opportunity to. I watched bits and pieces. Um, in my opinion, uh, I'll give you my opinion and then I'll get to the facts, but in my opinion, I thought Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton uh, were the strongest candidates. The other candidates, uh, I mean, you don't, I to tell you the truth, I never even heard about the other uh, candidates that were in there. I mean, uh, it's just because the media coverage, you know, I guess that influences it. And um, so uh, I'll give my two cents, my two words, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, he <laughs> feel the burn. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> now, nah, he he was. He was. I think he was strong. If you watch, it was funny. I watched something on Facebook today, and it was the title of it was "Everyone Agrees with Bernie," and they would g show B Bernie would say his opinion, and everyone else. Well, I have to agree with Bernie on this. Well, I have to agree with Senator Sanders. Well, Bernie's correct about. Th he's talk about a couple weeks ago. We talked about how he was the fastest to a million dollars. He listen. I, I if I'm Hillary, I'm watching out. Yeah. Because he is coming in hot and just, geez, I, he's, he's, he said a lot of things that the public loved and ate up. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things, as, as a presidential candidate, a lot of smart moves, a lot of good, his, his PR people, his, you know, he, his messages were on point. And, I mean, uh, I'm sure he had some kind of, like, trainer. A coach for this debate, yes. and, and that coach deserves a pat. He oh. Bernie better go buy that coach a nice steak dinner. <laughs> I agree. I mean, um, it seemed as though Hillary Clinton was comfortable in the debate. Oh, yeah, but, no, she was, but but he he had it. He should he should have been in the middle, you, you know. But I agree. But uh, you know, the way it was set up was in the recent polls. That's how they like. So Hillary Clinton is like the front runner yeah, basically right now. And then yeah, right now. Right now, but. Listen, I, <laughs> yeah. I think Bernie Sanders taking that. Uh, I agree, and uh, you know they talked about the usual issues. Gun control was was uh, a hot topic. Um, <laughs> Hillary's emails. Yeah, and um, I liked what Bernie. Actually, that was funny what Bernie said. Bernie, Bernie goes, "We've all heard about her emails, okay? You know what? Let's talk about something else. The middle class. I know he talked a lot about the middle class. Mm -hmm. I like that. Which I like that too. Just knowing yeah. how it is true, the middle class has com almost completely dissolved. There is. The last couple of presidents just has destroyed this middle class. There is the way we 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 are going. There won't be a middle class anymore. I agree. So and that's that's the backbone of America. Small business is the backbone of America. People can argue that all they want, but without small business, the infrastructure doesn't work. Yeah, and uh, that's pretty much all on 2016. The only other headline I have is Joe Biden still hasn't declared whether he's going to run. Uh, that's our vice president. Um, he. You know, he, he still hasn't declared whether he's going to run due to the death of, uh, of his son back in uh, the summer, Bo. Um, so we'll have to see what ha wait and see what happens with that. Um, but uh, moving on now to Iona News. Uh, Homeless Awareness Night took place last week. Uh, student Campus Minister Molly Traub and Chrissy Bookie, the president of ICTV, uh, along with uh, other clubs and organizations, organized this. Um, the new, uh, the new edition of the Ionian came out today, so uh, all of you on campus, be sure to pick up a copy. And also, uh, if you're not on campus, you're not near campus, you can certainly head over to our website and view the stories online. And there's a nice little article about the Wi-Fi situation. I know everyone, everyone on campus is very passionate about that. Yeah, um, I wrote about the Wi-Fi and how it's, you know, it's very slow and how a lot of students are experiencing problems with it, but you know, I from what I heard, I um, you know they're they're working on it, so that's that's good to hear. So hopefully by the spring, you know, the the new fiber optics will be activated and we'll have uh, faster Wi-Fi. Hopefully, speed. the key word there. <laughs> um, another headline we have is that one case has been confirmed in the mumps outbreak. Um, SGA is looking to ban or is basically going to ban the next boards. 
um, and those are those little boards that you see, you know, when people people put their two feet on and they're they're kind of like, have you seen them? Oh, the the funky duck things. Oh, thank God. Yeah. You I, know what? I'm sorry, but those things are dangerous. That's why America. That's why people are fat in America. Yeah. We're so lazy we can't walk. I saw some kid yesterday riding it to Mazella Field, and I was like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> I said. A good tenth of this pop of the school population must have them. Really? You can't walk. You need to ride a little, whatever if you want to call it, little motorized wheel thing. Get some, uh, get some exercise. I know. You know? I, we <laughs> listen. We can all use it. Um, information. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I I messed up there. Um, the Procario Foley's uh, Doctor uh, Carl Pro- Procario Foley and Elena. Procario Foley, both professors here in Iona in the religious department, won an, an, a, a, a religious award, so congratulations, congratulations to them. Um, and our biggest headline is that Homecoming is uh, coming up. Yeah, everyone better show up. It's yeah. going to be awesome. Yeah, you so better be there, so everyone. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you go home this weekend, you really are. You're missing out. You're making a terrible decision. It's starting tomorrow, and it's going to be awesome. Um, so... Uh, it's, uh, we have Maroon Madness kicking off at 9 p.m. Saturday, a little carnival. and uh, Carnival, sport games, alumni are going to be just – tomorrow night it's going to be telling you off the hook, Maroon Madness. I'll tell you, being in it last year, it's awesome. It is it is awesome. Yeah. Especially any any freshman, you got to go. Talk about – this is something – like you really haven't had any big, big events yet. This is the big thing. you got to make sure you are involved yeah. that. Uh, and then our final announcement is that uh, uh, Iona College Admissions is having some tours this weekend. Uh, this Saturday, uh, 10 o'clock info session, followed by a 10.30 a.m. tour. Um, and then a 12 p.m. info session, followed by a 12.30 p.m. tour. This is definitely the time to say Iona College, especially, uh, you know, Iona College in action with homecoming and everything. You know, you'll see all the activities that are going on. So uh, looking forward to that. So, and that's all the announcements that I have, but, and when we come back, we will uh, get to all of our campus sports and as well as national sports. Dave will have that for you. Yep. Uh, So we'll be right back after these messages.